The Global Peace Institute has recognized this series of videos on the history of Muslims of Sri Lanka. In recognition of its contribution to harmony in Sri Lanka, I was honored as a youth ambassador. The thought of preserving and raising awareness of our heritage in Sri Lanka is humbling. Alhamdulillah, all praise belongs to God. Muslims of Sri Lanka have worked closely with the rulers and with all other communities to play their role in a rich, unique civilization. Muslims have actively supported the Sri Lankan kings and their subjects not only during the ancient times but also during the colonial period of the Portuguese, the Dutch and finally the British. Through this series of videos titled History of the Muslims of Sri Lanka, we seek to restore the relationship and sustain the historical friendship. Our goal all along was to explain history in an easy and understandable fashion and also in some small way to help promote peace and coexistence in this lovely island country of ours. So to learn that these videos have been cited for its steadfast work and enduring contribution to build a harmonious Sri Lanka was truly wonderful and humbling. With episode 11, I want to thank Dr. Rafia and her dedicated team at the Global Peace Institute, Mr. Ashan Madalasekara, Professor Rohan Gunaratna for his nomination, and my father for his research, and everyone else for giving us your precious time by watching this video series. Thank you very much. ancient Arabic document was found in the possession of one of the oldest Mu'a families in Beruala many, many years ago. According to this document, two sons of the royal family of Yemen arrived in Sri Lanka in the 7th century. One landed in Mana and the other in Beruala where he settled down. There are a few Mu'as in Beruala who trace their ancestry to this Yemeni prince. J.C. Van Sanden cites literary evidence, namely an old Arabic document in the possession of one of the oldest Mu'a families residing in Beruala in support of the claims of some Moorish folk of Beruala who traced their ancestry to a scion of Arabian royalty who departed from Yemen in the 22nd Hijri year, in the time of the second Caliph Umar. It is related here that of a fleet of vessels carrying three sultans that left Yemen, Sultan Salahuddin's son, Samsuddin, cast anchor at Mana off the west coast of Ceylon, while another vessel conveying Sultan Muhammad's son, Sadurdin, sailed south and landed at Beruala, where he settled down. There were a few Moors in Van Sanden's time who in fact traced their ancestry to this prince. In fact, the oldest standing mosque in Sri Lanka is located in Beruala. It is known as Masjidul Abrar and is situated in the Maradana area of Beruala and is believed to have been built over a thousand years ago, in 920 AD. The origin of Muslim settlements around the Indian Ocean region, including those of Sri Lanka, goes back to pre-Islamic traders of Semitic ancestry such as the Phoenicians, Sabians, and those of the Hadramaut and Himyarite kingdom 
in the Yemeni region. Beruela lies in the southwestern coast of Sri Lanka and according to many, it marks the spot for the first Muslim settlement on the island. The town was originally called Berberin, a name which we came across in past episodes in the accounts of a few historians. The Chinese also traded here and Beruela was known to them as Pielo Li. It was no surprise that Beruela assumed such a significant position as it is located at the center of the ancient sea route between the east and the west alongside other port cities such as Colombo and Gaul. If you've been following this series, you would recall the episode on Peria Mudali Marika and his services to Sri Lanka and the Sri Lankan king and that he was from Beruela. According to reliable historical records, the Arabs landed in Beruela even before the advent of Islam, which was in the 6th century AD. After they embraced Islam, the Islamic tradition and culture too found its way into ancient Ceylon through Beruela, paving the way for the Singhala kings to establish a strong bond with the Islamic world. Beruela, according to some historians, derived its name from two Singhala words, Be, which means lower, and Ruela, which means sail, which denotes the place where the sails of the Arab merchant vessels were lowered. When the early Arab settlers arrived by sea and on sighting a tiny islet, they, overcome with joy, cried out Ber, Ber to their oarsmen of the catamarans to stop. However, another version traces the name to the famed North African or Berber traveller who arrived in Beruala. Ibn Battuta, who has written much about Sri Lanka in his travelling episodes, was also a Berber. Beruala was also a citadel of Islamic art which is evident by the beautiful ancient mosques that are built in the area and the Berberine lighthouse. On the other hand, there is a belief current in South India and Sri Lanka that while Beruala is the oldest Muslim settlement in Sri Lanka, it is a colony of Khayal in India. Motupalli in Andhra and Kayal Patinam in Tamil Nadu were two principal ports with flourishing Muslim traders in the 13th century and later. The latter, popularly referred to as Kayal, was one of the chief ports for trade with Sri Lanka and the Muslim traditions of this country trace the origin of many Muslim settlements here to traders from that port. At first, it might seem contradictory that this ancient city boasts of royal Yemeni lineage while also claiming to have originated from the trade hub of Kayal in India. These various traditions regarding the ancestry of the Moors are not necessarily contradictory but merely represent different waves of migrations that took place over the centuries the recollections of which remained entrenched in the collective memories of the descendants of the migrants. Though the original or pioneering Muslim traders were Arabs or of Arab descent, their numbers, although replenished by fresh immigrants, were actually increased by intermarriage, conversion and natural increase. So that with the passage of time, with diminution or diffusion of the Semitic element, the Muslims, because of the ideological valency of their religion, continued to be Arabs only in a cultural sense. So that by the 15th century, when the oceanic trade in the Asian region was carried on by the Indian Muslims and the Arabs, the Indian element was beginning to smother the Arab element 
amongst the Muslims who were dominating the seaborne trade of South and Southeast Asia. In fact, by the end of the 15th century, the Arabs had lost their supreme position in the seaborne trade of South and Southeast Asia, and it was the Indian Muslims who were in control of that trade. The ancestry of an entire community can be nothing but complex, and because these are recorded by various authoritative historians, we accept them all. Genealogical records maintained by certain Moor families also bear testimony to their Arab ancestry. Moor patronymics like Yemeni, occurring in Muhammad Samir's personages of the past, certainly suggest a Yemeni origin for some Moor families settled in the western coast. So do names like Idrus, which are fairly old as they occur in the Tombos or registers of the Dutch colonial period, in forms like Marakalage Idrus Lebba, the name appears to be peculiar to Yemen. The colloquial Sinhala term Marakala, still used by the Sinhalese to denote the Moors, and which even figures in Moor gay names or family names of old, also suggests a connection with seafaring being alone from the Tamil Marakkalan, which means sailor, mariner, or master of a ship from the Tamil Maram Kalam, which means wooden vessel or ship. That Arabs from Yemen also resorted to these parts is suggested by the report of Al-Idrisi, who says in his Nuzhat al-Mushtaq that the people of Sarandib cultivate coconuts in the small islands situated along its various routes, and that often the inhabitants of Marbat, belonging to Yemen, resort to these islands where coconuts are found. Perhaps this is why the Madhab, which denotes a particular school of thought within Islamic jurisprudence, followed by the vast majority of Sri Lankan Muslims, is that of the Shafi'i Madhab. The Shafi'i Madhab, founded by Muhammad ibn Idris as Shafi'i, has traditionally prevailed in Yemen, Southeast Asian countries like Malaysia and Indonesia, the coastal areas of South India, and among the Moors and Malays of Sri Lanka. It is very likely, therefore, that the Shafi'i school was introduced here by the early Arab settlers from southern Arabian lands like Yemen, Hadramaut, and Aden, with whom commercial and cultural links were maintained. In contrast, the Hanafi school has prevailed largely in those areas that have come under non-Arab, Turkish, or Mughal influence, which explains its prevalence in Turkey, Central Asia, and Northern India, as well as those Arab countries that have come under Turkish rule such as Egypt, Syria, Jordan, Palestine, and Iraq. It also prevails in Sri Lanka among the Maimans who have their origins in North India. <laughs>